you know, this is pretty a uh, pretty common scenario where a murmur is asculted, but the patient is asymptomatic. Um, I guess, you know, you might answer this as the question is asked, you know, when should that prompt referral, part A of that question, and part B, what about anesthetizing these patients? But I guess I might ask you, I mean, how often are you seeing referring veterinarians doing these radiographic studies and taking the bull by the horns and doing these measurements, you know? Yeah, and so I think this is a, a really important question, and um, this is something we're hoping to get more guidance from from our colleagues in anesthesia. Um, the first part of this question is relevant in terms of a soft murmur. Soft murmur usually indicates a very small mitral regurgitant fracture. So if it's a grade one to two and it is a small dog and the murmur is very typically as a result of mitral regurgitation, in other words, left apical systolic, um, then the patient probably does not have an increased anesthesia risk. But as soon as this approaches a grade three murmur, then diagnostics may be indicated. And an echocardiogram is actually not required prior to anesthesia, because if you look at the ASA recommendations, an increase in the sort of status is only achieved once a patient requires medication to be clinically normal and asymptomatic. And so that's not the administration of pimibendin. There is no difference in the patient with and without pimibendin outwardly, but it refers to a patient who is dependent upon a diuretic to keep their resting respiratory rate below 36. So in fact, their ASA status only increases once they've reached stage C. There are some drugs that perhaps we are a little bit more concerned about. And, you know, this is very much dependent upon the anesthetist preference and comfort level. But what we do sort of caution against is, is dogs with very loud murmurs, big hearts on radiographs, to be cautious about routine surgical fluid rates. Particularly if this is a long procedure, we are concerned about volume overload and actually inducing cardiogenic edema. That is not common. And we do feel that performing thoracic radiographs based on those cutoffs prescribed by the ACBI and consensus statements are very helpful in determining risk status for dogs that need to have either an emergency or elective anesthesia. That's very helpful.